In 2001, Amnesty International began working on economic, social and cultural rights. Over the years, we have collaborated with other organizations and community groups across the world. More than 250 research reports were produced. We have empowered marginalized groups and communities, enabled effective mobilization, and promoted accountability at national, regional, and global levels. Our supporters, members, and activists have taken hundreds of campaign actions targeting governments worldwide. Groundbreaking court cases have been won, saving thousands of lives and setting good precedents. But despite these achievements, enormous challenges remain. The rights to housing, health, water, sanitation, decent and secured work and education are all under threat. We do something quite different from what, let's say, a development organization or a humanitarian organization or even a more traditional public health group might do. We approach any of the issues that we're looking at from the perspective of what people are entitled to under human rights law and what responsibilities and obligations governments have towards people. We've seen these sort of measures being introduced in so many countries all over the world. We've seen it in Europe, we've seen it in parts of South America, we've seen it in West Africa. And what this project is trying to do is understand, on the one hand, how these measures, this pulling back of state funding, this um, changes to the public health system, how these have impacted people's ability to access necessary healthcare, and also what the process has been on part of the government when they were making these decisions. So were they participatory? Was there any accountability to how these decisions were made? Were any other less restrictive alternatives considered by the government before they took these decisions? So I think very fundamentally the project is looking at how governments think about their human rights obligations when they are framing economic and fiscal policy. And, um, pushing for human rights obligations to have a much larger role in those conversations. In terms of changing the discourse, that would be an incredibly important thing to sort of demystify this idea that it's economic decision making that we're not equipped to participate in a discussion about. We have been working on the right to housing since we started uh, to focus on economic, social and cultural rights. So far we have mainly focused on uh, informal settlements and slums, the rights of people living in the slums and usually those that are at risk of being forcibly evicted. And now we are expanding that work and we want to focus on homelessness. There are many reasons people become homeless. This is not a homogeneous group. What they have in common is that their human rights are being violated. The governments are failing to ensure access to basic essential rights. We want to tackle the root causes of homelessness. We want governments to recognize it as a human rights issue. They must not be complicit in abuses and violations of people's rights. We have a movement of over 7 million people that will help us change the discourse. It will help people understand that it is not a fault of their own 